food is really powerful. The way we talk about food is really powerful because the way that we talk about food is the way that we talk about culture. And the way that we talk about culture is the way that we talk about people. I'm Kyle Finnegan. I'm a documentary filmmaker and I've been doing that for about six years now. Well, this is a series about something that appears in food all over our society. To me, it's savory salt. It's a little bit of a brighter white. Uh, I remember hearing about MSG as a kid as like something that was bad for you. During COVID, I was like getting more interested in cooking and a friend recommended that I like try it out. One of the first things I cooked with MSG was just like roasted vegetables. I remember like putting broccoli in the oven with like salt, pepper, garlic, and like a little bit of MSG. It really amplified the flavor. There was like so much more umami and it just like changed everything. I was like, I could be doing this to so many more dishes. It was definitely a pivotal moment in my cooking. And I started sharing it with friends. I just like started giving out little baggies of it and they like all really loved it too. So whenever I talked about cooking, I would always mention it. Around the same time during COVID, there was like a big social media campaign to redefine Chinese restaurant syndrome, which is like a term around MSG, like used to stigmatize people that use it, mostly like Chinese restaurants. And it was like kind of percolating around the culture. It kind of signaled to me like, maybe this is something that there's like a deeper history to look into. When I first started making the film, I think I was most interested in like how MSG works. Like during the 60s and 70s, people were really concerned about what was being put into their food. And MSG, you know, it has a scary chemical name and it's in our food. So there was an environmental movement that was hoping to get MSG banned happening parallel to the racist comments. So when those things kind of coalesced, it just was like this perfect storm to get MSG stigmatized during COVID. A lot of just like anti-Asian hate events. The way that people talked about COVID and the way that people talked about MSG were kind of like linked in a way because you're talking about bodies, you're talking about the way that people like consume food and just like consume things in general. It was never a consideration not to use MSG. It would be just like a consideration of opening a French restaurant without butter. One of the things that really stuck out to us about Tim was that Tim comes from a family of chef and restaurateurs. His uncle is a prominent chef and restaurant owner, but his uncle who, who taught him a lot about the restaurant business and about cooking, uh, doesn't use MSG and still doesn't use MSG to this day. But Tim does and considers that a necessary part to his cooking. So that kind of like generational divide and that conversation happening between generations felt was really compelling. They're both different expressions of the same sort of cuisine and a same culture. So it's not to say that like either one is invalid, but it's just like a personal expression. And food is really personal. He views food as like an easy entry point into, into someone else's culture. So chefs like have a, a real like power and, and responsibility in, in what they cook. Tells me that like food is really powerful. The way we talk about food is really powerful because the way that we talk about food is the way that we talk about culture. And the way that we talk about culture is the way that we talk about people. So I think we have to be really thoughtful in the ways that we think about food, talk about food. Representing a community, um, specifically like the AAPI community, which I'm not a part of, was definitely like a concern of mine. As we got further along, you know, we learned a lot about like anti-Asian hate and stigma. And I thought like, maybe I'm not the best person to tell the story. But we did have like a diverse group of folks like telling the story in front of and behind the camera. Our producer, Suzanne Shin, director of photography, Roberto DeCecco, and we're like huge in telling the story. So I felt like just having a team effort behind this, make sure that we like really got the story right. And just like listening to the experts when they were talking to us on camera and taking cues from them, I think really helped us tell the, the full picture.